In this chapter, we are going to talk about another important data structure, the so-called splay tree data structure. So first of all, what are splay trees? Splay trees are types of binary search trees. So they have tree-like structures, which means that every single node in the tree-like structure may have two children, a left child and a right child. The left child is smaller than the parent node. The right child is greater than the parent node. So splay trees are binary search trees with the additional property that recently accessed items are quick to access again. It was invented back in 1985, and most of the operations have ordo log n, so logarithmic running time complexity, of course, because it is a binary search tree, but some of the operations may become very slow. So splay trees may become imbalanced, and because of the imbalanced feature, it may happen that the running time complexity is ordo n linear, which means Means that we may end up with a linked list instead of a balanced binary search tree. Okay, so splay trees are not strictly balanced. This is why it is faster to construct a splay tree. It is not going to be faster as far as the search, insertion, and removal operations are concerned. I mean that it is faster, that it is faster to construct than, for example, an AVL tree. For an AVL tree, we have to make several rotations. Because splay trees are not strictly balanced, we make less rotations, and this is why it is faster to construct a splay tree tree and it is easier to implement it. By the way, splay trees rely heavily on rotations as we have seen with AVL trees and red black trees. So what's crucial is that splay trees have extremely fast access to items that we have accessed recently. So this is the main feature of splay trees. So recently manipulated nodes and items are located near the root node of the splay tree and this topology is maintained by rotations. So every time we search for a given item, we make sure with the help of rotations that this item will become the root node of the tree-like structure. So this is how we can make sure that recently manipulated items are located near the root node. Okay, so we are going to use right rotation exactly as we have seen with AVL trees and red black trees. So what is the running time complexity of right rotation? It has ordo 1 constant running time complexity because we just have to update the references. And it is extremely crucial that the binary search tree properties are not going to change as far as the parent-child relationships and as far as the in-order traversal is concerned. What about the left rotation? The left rotation is very, very similar. In this case, it is quite in the opposite in the sense that we make a left rotation, so from right to left. But of course, the running time complexity is still ordo 1, constant running time complexity, and the binary search tree properties are not going to change. Okay, so what if we search for a given item in a splay tree? So this is the fundamental operation as far as splay trees are concerned. So it is very, very similar to a standard binary search tree, which means that we have access to the root node exclusively. If the item we are looking for is smaller than the value in the actual node, we go to the left. Otherwise, we go to the right until we find the item we are looking for. So this is why it has ordo log n logarithmic running time complexity if the tree-like structure is balanced. If the tree-like structure is not balanced, then it may happen that the search operation takes ordo n linear running time complexity. Okay, so after inserting the item into the display tree, then we make rotations in order to make sure that the item we are looking for will be in the root node. This operation is called splaying, so this is why the tree-like structure is called splay trees, because after every search operation, or basically after every operation, whether we insert a given node or whether we search for a given node, we do the so-called splaying operation, which means that the item we have found or the item we have inserted is going to be the root node. Node. Of course, we have to apply several rotations in order to end up with this situation, but anyways, this is why splay trees relies heavily on rotations. But what's extremely crucial is that there is a difference between splay trees and balanced binary search trees. As far as balanced binary search trees are concerned, such as AVA trees or red black trees, the aim of rotations were to make the underlying binary search tree balanced, because this is how we can guarantee logarithmic run 
running time complexity. Here with splay trees, the aim of rotations is not to rebalance the tree. The aim of rotations is to make sure that the node we are looking for or the node we have inserted is going to be the root node. So we make sure that we rearrange the structure of the binary search tree such that the item is going to be the root node. And why is it good? Because next time we search for that given item, it can be accessed very fast in order one constant running time complexity because we start with the root node and after the splaying operation, the root node is the item we are looking for. So we are going to talk about the applications as far as caches or IP addresses lookup tables are concerned and we will come to the conclusion that splay trees are extremely useful. Okay, so the splaying operation can be achieved by three methods. That of course rely extremely heavily on standard subtree rotations. We have the zigzag situation, we have the zigzag situation, and we have the zig situation. So first of all, let's talk about the zigzag situation. In this case, the node X we have inserted, or the node we have looking for, is a right child of a left child, or of course there are symmetric cases or symmetric partners, which means that the node X can be a left child of a right child. So what do we have to do? This is the so-called left-right heavy or right-left heavy cases. So we have to make two rotations, a left rotation and a right rotation. So let's take a look at the concrete example. So for example, node X is a right child of its parent and the parent is a left child of its grandparent. So what do we have to do in these cases? We have to make a left rotation on the parent node, so node Z, and then a right rotation on the grandparent node, so node Y. And we have the symmetric partner when node X is the left child of its parent and the parent is the right child of the grandparent. Okay, so let's take a look what's going to happen if we are dealing with this case. So X is a right child and the parent node is a left child. We have to make a left rotation on the parent node, so on node Z, so we end up with a situation like this. And of course, after that, we have to make a right rotation on the parent. So as you can see, the left rotation has changed the topology of the tree-like structure. So the grandparent has been node Y, but after the rotation, the parent of node X will be the node Y. But anyways, we have to make a right rotation on the parent again, and this is how we make sure that the X is going to be the root node of that given subtree. Extremely crucial that the aim of rotations is not that we want to make the underlying binary search tree balanced. We want to make sure that after the rotation, the node is going to be the root node. So this is why, as you can see, after the rotation, the node is closer to the root node. Then after the right rotation, the node is the root node itself. So this is the aim of rotation as far as play trees are concerned. Of course, we have the symmetric partner. So here, if we take a look at the symmetric partner, what do we have to do? We have to do the same, but quite on the opposite in the sense that we have to make a right rotation on node Z, and then we have to make a left rotation on node Y. What about the zigzag situation? The node X we have inserted or node X we are looking for is a left child of a left child or a right child of a right child. This is the doubly left heavy or doubly right heavy situation. So we have to make two rotations. So for example, if we are dealing with this case, of course we have a symmetric partner. So as you can see, node X is a left child of its parent and the parent is a left child of its parent or the node X is a right child of its parent and the parent is a right child of its parent. So this is the doubly left heavy situation and this is the doubly right heavy situation. Of course, in this situation, for example, we have to make a right rotation on the grandparent Okay, and after that we have to make another right rotation on the parent, so on node Z. And this is how we end up with this situation. You may pose the question that, okay, this tree-like structure is still imbalanced. And yeah, it is imbalanced because the aim of rotations, as far as splay trees are concerned, is to make sure that the node becomes the root node. And as you can see, this is exactly what's happening here. We have the node 
after the rotation it becomes the left child of the root node and after another right rotation it becomes the root node and this is the aim of rotations when dealing with splay trees. Of course, if we are dealing with the symmetric partner, what do we have to do? Of course, we have to do a left rotation on the grandparent and then another left rotation on the parent. And this is how we make sure that the node is going to be the root node. What about the last situation, the so-called zig situation? So we have to repeat the previous steps as far as zigzag and zigzag cases are concerned over and over again until we get to the root node. But of course, unfortunately, sometimes we end up at situations when just a single left or right rotation is needed to make sure that node X will become the root node of the original tree-like structure. So here node X is just the child of the root node, whether it is the left child or the right child. So what do we have to do? We have to make a single left or single right rotation. So here we make a single right rotation on the parent node, which is the root node of the tree-like structure. If we are dealing with the symmetric partner, then we have to do a left rotation on the parent node, which is the root node of the tree-like structure. So if we make a simple right rotation, for example, in this case, then X will become the root node as you can see. Okay, so it is absolutely crucial that the rotations are exactly the same as we have seen with AVA trees and red black trees, but the aim of rotations is totally different. Here, we are not making the rotations to make sure that the underlying tree-like structure will become balanced. We make the rotations to make sure that the node we have inserted or the node we are looking for will be the root node of the tree-like structure. Why is it good? Because next time we are looking for that given item, Item, the item will be in the root node and it is going to be quite fast to find that given item and this is why we can implement caches and IP lookup tables with the help of splay trees. Okay, so let's take a look at the running time complexities. The space complexity is ordo and linear running time complexity and all the operation have ordo log and logarithmic running time complexity on average case. But what about worst case scenario? In worst case scenario, the display tree may become imbalanced, of course, because after the rotations, it may happen in worst case that we end up with a linked list and the operations have ordo and linear running time complexity in worst case scenario. So splay trees have ordo and linear running time complexities in worst case scenario. So for example, we have a tree-like structure like this. It is a valid splay tree. We have a root node 32. The left children are smaller than the parent node. The right children are greater than the parent node. So as you can see, it is a valid binary search tree. And basically, splay trees are binary search trees. So what if we would like to search for 12. So what do we have to do? We have to start with the root node because we have access to the root node exclusively. Of course, 12 is smaller than 32, so we go to the left. 12 is greater than 10, so we go to the right. 12 is smaller than 19, so we go to the left. We go to the left, and this is the item we are looking for. And this is the crucial difference between binary search trees and splay trees, because after finding a given item, so here, for example, we find 12, then what do we have to do? We have to make rotations in order to make sure that 12 will become the root node. And why is it good? Because recently visited items will be around the root node, which means that finding these items are going to be quite fast. Okay, so what do we have to do? We can come to the conclusion that this is the so-called zigzag situation. So what do we have to do? We have to make two right rotations. So this is what we have been talking about in a theoretical section, that the zigzag situation, when we have a doubly left heavy case or a doubly right heavy case, because every single case has a symmetric partner. As you can see, this is the case we are dealing right now. So what do we have to do? We have to make a right rotation on the grandparent. And then we have to make a right rotation on the parent. And this is how we end up with a situation like this. Okay, so this is a zigzag situation, so we have to make a right rotation on the grandparent, and then we have to make another right rotation on the parent. 
and we end up with a situation like this. But of course, we have to do rotations until the node we are considering is not the root node, so it is not over. We have to make further rotations. And if we take a look at this case, then basically this is a typical zigzag situation. So we have to make a left rotation on the parent, and then we have to make another right rotation. So this is what we have been talking about in a theoretical section, a zigzag situation when the node is a right child of its parent and the parent is a left child of the grandparent. So what do we have to do? We have to make a simple left rotation on the parent, so node Z, and we have to make a right rotation on node Y. So this is exactly what's happening here. So this is a typical zigzag situation. So we have to make a left rotation on the parent, so node 10. And then we have to make a right rotation on node 32. And with the help of these operations, we have managed to end up with the valid solution, which means that the node with value 12 has become the root node. Okay, and of course, this is the aim of splay trees. This is the so-called splaying operation. So this is what we are going to implement in the coming lectures. Thanks for watching.